In this example, we're drawing the equation with two variables is given to us, and we're asked to do quite a few things, which is identify the conic. I can identify the conic right now without doing any work. How can I do that? Well, because it says x squared minus 4y squared. Remember, for hyperbolas, we have minuses. Minuses. So, I already know my conic. I'm going to deal with a hyperbola. After identifying the conic, I have to find its center, draw its graph, find its foci. But since I know what I want to do already, uh, my goal is to change this equation into one that looks either like the top one or like the bottom one. And I'm going to accomplish that by completing the square. Let's get started. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to add 11 to both sides. So we're going to have x squared minus 2x minus 4y squared minus 16y is equal to 11. After that, group the x's together. So x squared minus 2x plus blank minus factor of 4 from the y squared. The reason you're doing that is because you want to be able to complete the square. So minus 4 times y squared plus 4y plus blank. So plus 4 plus 4y because negative 4 times positive 4 is negative 16 equals 11 plus blank plus blank. Complete the square. Take half of negative 2. Half of negative 2 is negative 1. Square it. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. Let me go over the process again. Find a linear term. There it is. Negative 2. Take half of negative 2. Negative 1. Square it. Add it to both the left side and to the right side. Now, complete the square for the y's. Find a linear term. Find its coefficient, 4. Take half of 4. You get 2. Square it. You get 4. Add 4 to this side. Did you add 4 to the other side? Ah, you just made a mistake. You're not supposed to add 4 to that side. What are you supposed to add to that side? Well, a big surprise. A negative 16. If you're scratching your head now and you say, well, I added 4 to the left side, negative 16 to the right side, did I not learn math properly? Am I not supposed to add the same number to both sides? You are. You actually added a negative 16 to the left side as well. You're not sure how? Well, think about distributing the negative 4. If you distribute the negative 4, you have negative 4y squared, negative 16y, and then a negative 4 times a 4 is negative 16. So you actually added a negative 16 to both sides. Let's continue. Now we have perfect squared trinomials. This is x minus 1, 20 squared, minus 4 times y plus 2, 20 squared, is equal to negative 4. Divide everything by negative 4. Our goal, remember, is to get 1 on one side. Let's see what our equation looks now. Like a negative 4 divided by negative 4 is a positive 1. So we have y plus 2, 20 squared over 1, minus x minus 1 squared over 4, x minus 1 squared over 4 is equal to 1. Now you should be able to recognize your conic. Let me move to the formula board one more time. Look at what we have accomplished. A 
the equation that we got looks exactly like this one. So, let's find its center. The top looks like y minus k quantity d squared, and then x minus h quantity d squared. This is your a squared, this is your b squared. So, h is equal to 1, k is equal to negative, not negative 1, negative 2, center is 1 comma negative 2. One part done. Oh, oh, I forgot to identify the conic, even though I said hyperbola many times. I'll say it again. This conic is a hyperbola. There. So I identified it. I found the center. Now I'm going to draw its graph. How do you draw the graph? Start with the center. Plot. Go one to the right, go to the. Here is your center. Your a, your a squared is 1. So a squared is equal to 1, which means your a is equal to 1. And more importantly, it means that the rise of your asymptote is 1. So rise is equal to 1. Find your b. b squared is equal to 4. Your b is equal to 2. And more importantly, the rise of your asymptote is equal to 2. Okay, very good. So we're going to use the same procedure as before from the center. Now that we know our 1 and our right, from the center of the hyperbola, we go 1 up, 1 down, because A could be either positive or negative 1. And then from the center, we go 2 to the right and 2 to the left. Using those, those points, we now draw the rectangle whose, whose uh, diagonals we need. Now, we draw the diagonals. There we go, one diagonal down, there's one asymptote. There is the other asymptote. Again, because it says y squared minus x squared. This is a hyperbola with a vertical major axis. So, the point that's one unit above the center and one unit below the center is also one of the vertices of the hyperbola. You are now ready to sketch the hyperbola. One of the branch, branches opens up, the other branch opens down, and there is the graph of your hyperbola. One last thing to do. What's the last thing? Let's find its foci. Oh, well, I can't find the foci yet, but I can find C. C is the distance from the center to one of the foci. So let's find C. We know that C squared is equal to A squared plus b squared, c squared is equal to 1 plus 4. c squared is equal to 5, which means that c is equal to plus or minus square root of 5. How is that helpful? Well, that is helpful because the distance from the, vert at, from the center to the focus is square root of 5. So this distance is approximately 2.23. Start at the center, go 2.2 units up, and there is one of your foci. The x coordinate is the same as the x coordinate of the center. 
fine. What is that? That is one mm or two units, well, square root of five units above the center. The center has y coordinate of negative two. We just went square root of five units up. So this is square root of five. So the y coordinate of the first focus, the one that's above the center, is negative two plus square root of five. What about the one below? Well, from the center this time, we need to go square root of five units down. So one unit down, two units down, and about 0.2. There is the second focus. Same x coordinate as the center, one. But the y coordinate this time is negative two minus square root of five. Everything that we needed to accomplish was accomplished.